Thanks for watching the Real Solar Cars channel. Have you ever wondered what happens when you charge your electric vehicle? It's a bit more complicated than charging your phone, and for good reason. An EV charger is over a hundred times more powerful than a phone charger. There are some extra things that need to happen to ensure that everything about charging an electric vehicle is safe. If you just so happen to be ordering from Battery Hookup, we'd be thankful if you would use our affiliate code REAL, R-E-A-L. You'll save 5% and we'll get a commission, but don't order things you don't need. Again, use coupon code REAL at Battery Hookup. We'll be looking at the first generation Chevy Volt today. This information is probably not documented anywhere else. Here is a simplified schematic of the vehicle's high voltage system. So when the vehicle is parked, all of the contactors are normally open to ensure that no high voltage leaves the battery pack. But then if they, when the user uh, connects the J1772 cable to charge the vehicle, there's a lot of things that need to happen for the charging to start. So the first thing that happens, the vehicle's onboard computers detect that the J1772 plug has been connected to the vehicle, and then it wakes up the the rest of the vehicle systems using the COM enable line that will allow the vehicle computer to communicate with the onboard charger which is in the vehicle and with the battery pack so more on that later the onboard computer requests that the EVSE enable the AC power on the J1772 connector so that is a important safety feature that the power is not present on the connector until it is plugged into the vehicle. So then the onboard charger will report to the onboard uh, computer what voltage is being supplied for, from, to the AC charger from the EVSE. And if the onboard computer decides that it is acceptable, then the charging process continues. So the first contactor to close is the negative contactor to the charger. And then the positive charger contactor closes. But the charger is still not operating yet. The vo char voltage at the charger output is zero volts. But we show them both as negative because they are connected to the negative terminal of the battery. Next, the charger is enabled using uh, data commands over the CAN bus. So then the charger is turned on to output the same voltage that the battery pack is currently uh, measuring. So remember what we said about the COM enable line. The COM enable line goes high and the, the system starts to communicate. And one critical piece of information comes from the battery pack and that is the current battery voltage. So then the onboard computer uses that measured battery voltage to configure the charger to operate that same voltage for the pre-charging operation. So here the b battery is supplying voltage to this side of the multifunction contactor and then the onboard charger is supplying voltage to this side of the multifunction contactor. And they are the same voltages. So now the onboard computer can close the multifunction contactor safely and there would be no high current flow when that happens. But now the contactor is closed. We don't, don't have any current flowing because the charger is programmed to output the same voltage as the battery pack. 
So now we need to command the battery charger to output a higher voltage in order to actually allow current to flow into the battery pack and charge it. So the normal charging voltage for the Chevy Volt charger is 405 volts. But the output voltage won't actually reach that until the battery pack is nearly full. So then when it's time to stop the charging process, these steps are undone in nearly the reverse order. So the first part of stopping the charging process might be when the user presses the switch on the J1772 plug. So that switch is the proximity switch and it signals to the vehicle that the connector is going to be unplugged soon. So the user presses the proximity switch on the J1772 connector and then the onboard computer commands the onboard charger to turn off. So then no current is flowing through the AC input to the charger or the DC output of the charger. So then, since there is no current flowing from through the DC output of the charger, it is safe to open the multifunction contactor without current flowing through it. And now since the charger is turned off the and it's not and it's no longer connected to the battery pack there are resistors in the charger dc output circuit that will discharge the capacitors in the dc output circuit so the battery charger output discharges down to zero volts and then the rest of the contactors open, starting with the charger positive contactor and then the charger negative contactor. And that, so now all the, all the high voltage uh, circuits have been powered down and the vehicle will soon shut off the COM enable line as well in order to save the uh, power on the 12 volt battery. Now we can analyze the captured data to show the how the pre-charge operations of the Chevy Volt work when charging from the AC uh, grid. So we'll load this uh, graph file for of the that shows the voltages on the contactors. Now th these are scale are you know offset, so they don't all up sh plot on top of the same uh, area. And since the colors are hard to see, we have kept them in order from top to bottom. So the charger negative, charger positive, main positive, main negative, multifunction contactor, pre-charge MOSFET, and the common able line. So this section here, this is the section of uh, charging the battery pack from the AC uh, grid. So we'll add some other uh, graphs to the plot here, such as the battery pack uh, voltage. So adding all these graphs is a lot of uh, boring work, so we just skipped that part to make the video go quicker. <laughs> And you yeah, know, we know this is kind of a mess, but we'll be explaining uh, what exactly is going on here as we go along. So, first part of the charging connection is the so the user connects their J1772 cable to the charging port. And we don't have any connections there because we don't need them. So, but then 
shortly after there, then the COM enable line goes high and the battery pack starts outputting data such as the voltage of the battery pack. So then the, the, com the onboard computers are analyzing the data from the battery pack and deciding whether or not it is safe to charge. And then if it is, then here the contactors start to close, starting with the charger negative contactor and then the charger positive contactor about 80 milliseconds later. Then the charger is commanded on to high voltage only mode apparently and the vo commanded voltage to the charger ramps up from zero to the voltage that was measured at the battery pack so that these voltages the charger is being set to output the same voltage as the battery pack so that way when the contactors are closed in a little bit there will not, not be any uh, large current flows to charge up uh, capacitors anywhere and then the ch charger reports the voltage at its output and here we see that the voltage at the charger's output rises and stabilizes to the voltage that it was commanded to output, which also happens to be the voltage that is was measured at the battery pack. And then about 300 milliseconds after the measured voltage stabilizes, then the multifunction contactor closes and that allows a complete connection to the onboard battery pack from the onboard charger and the battery can begin to charge. But then, because the chargers and the battery pack are outputting the same voltage, there isn't going to be any current flow. So then the next step is the vehicle's computers command the onboard charger to up to 405 volts, which is the normal setting for charging a Chevy Volt battery. And these spikes here, though, like we're not sure what's going on there. It seems to be uh, related to uh, perhaps an equipment issue, where this uh, setup or so is still under beta testing. And then when it comes time to stop the charging process, the see first the onboard charger is commanded to turn off. And then we, we see that result in the voltage measured at the charger's output drops slightly as the charger shuts down and then we, we see the after a short while the multifunction contactor opens so here we see that the, the time difference between the you know shutting down the onboard charger and opening the multifunction contactor is a little bit over one second so then here the measure, measured voltage at the charger's output 
you know, so now that the, now that the charger has been turned off and the multifunction contactor has been opened, the voltage at the charger output is just being held in the capacitors, and there's also some resistors in that circuit to ensure that the capacitors will discharge when everything is powered off. So here we can see the capacitor discharge curve of the high voltage uh, output of the battery charger. And then after a little while the positive contactor opens and the negative contactor opens. And that is the so now the charger is shut off, the contactors are opened, and then uh, then we see like with the vehicle systems, the, the COM enable line stays high for another 20 seconds or so afterward. And that's it, that's the charging sequence for the onboard charger of a Chevy Volt. So in case you didn't notice the first time or so, so one of the things that made this project uh, so difficult is the fact that on the charger circuit on the first generation Chevy Volt does not have a pre-charge resistor. And we can see what they what is actually happening is that they are using the onboard charger to pre-charge the DC charging circuit. So in order to do that, the charger is programmed to output the same voltage as the battery pack is currently uh, resting at. So you know, we couldn't just connect a uh, tip standard step-up converter, so the output voltage needed to be programmable in order to match the voltage at the battery pack already. So when the contactors are closed, that there would be no uh, high current transient flowing at the, at the moment those contactors close. So it's actually a clever little system or so like using a little bit of software to eliminate the need for uh, more electrical parts such as another contactor and another resistor.